All right, we are back. Right Checking on. in on some uh, some previous short content that was uh, that was created. If uh, if you want a good laugh, Steve made a very nice edit of uh, of me falling during a uh, a recent run here in the Poconos. Yeah, and you know what? It's actually got the most views out of all the shorts so far. Five hundred. Maybe we're gonna crack that thousand eventually. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's sick. Because it's been like a running joke that it's like four hundred, four fifteen. It's like a cap on shorts. Yeah. Like there's almost like a threshold for like them testing content. So nice, yeah. we broke through it. Yes, sir. Love cool. that. Well, let's get into it. Uh, I know we wanted to cover two topics today, and the first one, uh, I'll let you do the intro. Yeah, so the first one, I think we're going to talk a little bit of uh, political advertising. I think this is uh, an interesting one to see and um, a timely one to chat through. You know, this is, we're recording this Friday, August 16th, and this literally just happened, I think, like, the 14th or 15th, this kind of came out. So yeah, up. I'd be curious to hear if you have some thoughts of, like, how this actually happened, but essentially the the kind of, like, top line here is the Harris campaign, Kamala Harris campaign, they were buying text ads on the search results page where a lot of these, and a lot of them were like news articles. So like CNN, Axios or whatever, you would see like a headline if you were searching for, you know, Kamala and her campaign and Intel and stuff. And then there would be like these news articles that would pop up up top that looks like, hey, like, you know, whatever um, publications producing uh, like an organic piece of content. It's actually paid and it was a sponsored. So like a lot of the headlines were pretty misleading there. Um, I don't know if you have some like good um, examples, but I will show quite the, the interesting one, quite the so, interesting one. So they were, so just so I get it right. And I, I think this is it. They were literally buying keywords. Let's just say like Kamala Harris. And then they were putting up a search ad that was going to like a, a new story on CNN with the title that they just made up or whatever, going to a positive news story about Kamala Harris. So here's the cool thing, transparency pages, right? So this is Google's transparency ad center, and this is just pulled up for the advertiser. Of, and anybody uh, could view this. Like, yes. This isn't like a bought for tool. What do you do? Just click like the three dots next to like an ad and you can. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can actually just go here and then you search for the actual advertiser uh, and it'll pull it up. Um, and so you can see the Harris for president. So yeah, here's a good one, right? Here's a sponsored ad. Um, and I, they don't show you the keyword that was obviously triggered, but let's just assume it's probably something around Kamala Harris. Um, and it's an article to Trump defends January 6th comments. Trump will pardon January 6th rioters. And this is going to the co.uk independent site. Are they allowed to send ads not to their websites that they don't own? I thought you couldn't do that with Google ads, but you can just send traffic wherever you want. I don't see. That's the other thing that's like, I'm a bit confused about here as well. Is like usually don't within that have ad like account. Domain, yeah. Like domain. It's gotta be. Yeah. Like if you're starting to use a bunch of different domains in a Google ads account, like you're going to get flagged and your account's going to be shut down. So that's the other piece here that I want to kind of discuss is like, how is okay. this even possible? Let's let's go through a couple more examples. So this looks more like, hey, this is KamalaHarris.com. Uh, okay, VP President, that's cool, whatever. Um, here's one for NPR. Harris will lower health care costs. This is a trip because like they're paying for an ad. I don't know what the keyword is, but it's a Trump thing. Like, and it's a negative Trump. Uh, these are, what are these? These are videos. Um... What, what, what happens when I click on this? So it's a sponsored ad. Oh, it's a YouTube ad here. So YouTube ad. So I'm not too worried about the YouTube ads. They're going to be doing that, but I'm more worried about these text ads, right? Uh, okay, here's another one. VP of Harris. This is still going on. Like this AP is from, News, Reuters. Yeah, Reuters here. Inflation is down. AP News again. AP News. The Guardian. And just tell me if these are uh, these these uh, news publications, AP, Guardian, I know Independent, which way they fall on the political spectrum. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say they're probably pretty left. Oh, I mean, like NPR, what are you talking about? That's super neutral, right? <laughs> it's just um, so wild to see all of this. Yeah, here you go. VP Harris protects democracy. So if I click on this... Um, 
Does it actually show me the link? Oh, dude, these are actually in certain locations, too. Let's see. See all. Dude, they're getting sophisticated by zip code. They're pulling this in. So I can't. Let's see. See more about that. Let's see if that's wild. Uh, no gender. Age exclusions. No. All right. Let's go back. Let's see. See more from this advertiser. Let's go over this top one that was probably spent more. So let's see what this is. This ad. Okay, shown in the United States, ran, but let's look at this. Okay, look at where they're targeting this. All in the Southwest region. Very sophisticated with zip codes. You can see the map right here. See all. Excluded. Oh, wait, sorry. This is excluded regions from the campaign. So they already feel they have it in the bag for California, Nevada. Well, Mexico is kind of weird, but I get they're trying to like not have those ads overlap. Utah well, yeah. and New Mexico. So those are the exclusions. Um, and then I feel like the Nevada's rest. a pretty big, uh, pretty big swing one there. So I don't what, know if I would agree with that. What is this? What is eight five five three? What is that? That's Arizona. So is that exclusions? Am I not reading that right? Included regions. Oh, so Included. this is just Arizona. So yeah, they're targeting Arizona in this piece, which makes sense, right? Swing state. Yeah. I mean, dude. This is really interesting. Two variants. There you go. Two variants to the ad copy. We've got links here too. What are these site links? I can't see the actual like post, like the link for it. Um, and this was ran last show. Like it's running now. I don't know, dude. Search for. I would be really curious if you search for Kamala Harris on the search results right now. What you would see. Uh, let's look at one more of these things uh, that probably spent. Let's see. We could do amount spent. Number of times shown. Let's go, I don't know. God, can you just most recent? No, I want to do high, high to low. Give me the high to low amount spent. Okay, so they're spending a ton of money on YouTubes and videos, right? Um, okay, let's get to the search ads. Here's one. So this looks like it is going to the Harris website. Okay, so I'm not worried about that. Oh, come on. Sort by high to low. Give me the good stuff. Let's see. That's the Harris campaign. Where's the first non-Harris? Ooh, look at this. PBS getting some free traffic. So let's see what <laughs> this one is. Uh, ran from here, last shown. So it's not running anymore, but they spent between 10 to 15K. They got 30 to 40 impressions. Let's see where they were targeting. Uh, no excluded areas. That's okay because they have only inclusions. And so this, I'm assuming, is all Pennsylvania zip codes. 196302. I'm not familiar with it. You probably That's are. PA. Yeah, so PA. So it's getting yeah. super sophisticated on who they're... Because I think these little green maps are the inclusions. But I can't zoom in on it anymore. Um, so that's really really interesting so kamala harris record who is kamala harris so it's like who is and they ran it back then i think that was when the the story of man they're really sophisticated because this is kind of when they were talking about like well what's what's her record this is when it was all going down early on in the campaign so yeah harris for president is spinning ads <clears throat> on themselves My which you would expect but the these going out to the other newspapers or publications, corporate media websites, that is really crazy. Was I don't even know response? how they do that. I was going to say, was this in response to something? Or did somebody just kind of come across and say, hey, I was like doing something like, I guess what triggered this in the news cycle to be like, hey, this campaign. I only got it thing. from Ricardo. I didn't see it elsewhere. Um, yeah, I did see conversations on Twitter as far as you search for something for Kamala Harris. Yeah, and you only see you know Trump Trump items itself. But I mean, I guess I could just search for Kamala Harris and just see what pulls up. Top I stories just did the same, and I did that. I did Kamala Harris campaign, and then I'm seeing like Act Blue as like a sponsored okay. post for for them. Um, Paid by Victory Fund. 
Paris Victory is. Fun Pact. Yep, Act Blue. Let's Secure do like who com. is. Can I trigger some of these things? Like, I don't see any ads here. You know, I wonder too, man. Maybe they're not showing up in the Google search results. But I wonder if they have search partners selected, right? And then you would get a lot more placement that way. Oh, I guarantee they're doing all that. Yeah, but I don't. I, I can't trigger it live. That's what I'm just curious about. Is like what actually led to like those news articles being uh, being surfaced in general. There, like, did something happen that caused a lot of that to to pop up, or their their, their team was like, "Hey, we got to buy a lot of these articles now." These headlines and everything. Because I'm yeah, looking at swing states. Yeah, they talk about here they're targeting swing states, which is true. Um, their investigation from this all sides are not bad. When a team member noticed misleading Harris's as a Google and you search the matter extensively, we did not find Trump or Kenny Pent employing the same practice. Uh, so how was it covered in the media? Axos lean left bias, other insurance, many sources picked it up. Um, few few credited all sides. The story has been widely covered across the pillow, so CNN. Sean Hannity, Fox, former president on X, Elon, have also posted about it. So I'm curious on these tweets that he's talking about here. Um, that's Truth Social. Team Cotman doing the headlines. Sure, we know what that is. Whoa. I don't know. There may be an image. It got taken down. Elon is like unbelievable. Let's that's like such an Elon say tweet. About it. Whoa. Or like he'll oh, he'll wait, quote no, no. tweet like a major news article and be like, oh yeah, he don't care. <laughs> concerning, or like just like a one one liner real quick. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's fascinating. We have the results in the actual. If I go back to, and before you get to your thoughts, I do want to call one one thing out here real quick. Yeah, please do. So I'm looking right now at the um, advertising policy help center for Google. Here, I'll let you and pull that up. Yeah, let me just screen share that because I think that'll that'll provide some context here. And then we can get into like thoughts and whatever else. But I think this would be uh, important just to kind of note here. So this is the Google's like advertising uh, like political content, their advertising policy help center. And it yeah. says that they essentially res <laughs> support responsible political advertising um, and expect all political ads and destinations to comply with these local legal requirements. So it sounds like there's different requirements depending on the region or state, which makes total sense there. But essentially, it is legal for you to buy ads um, as long as you're an, uh, a verified Google advertiser. So like, that's the easiest barrier to entry of all time, if you think about it. Like, if you verify Google ads account, you basically need to upload like some type of like business document, like an EIN number, a social, uh, right. something to be like, Hey, this is like a legitimate business. So like if they have, you know, a pact or whatever, that's easy documents just to like put in be like, Hey, this is a real thing. And then Google is going to let you buy ads on uh, on search results page. Um, so just wanted to at least call that out there. It's not like there's anything like illegal going on here. It's, it's definitely a legal practice. Well, how do they get around leaking to, not their website. I don't get that. So that's one thing that I think is um, is really interesting here is I don't know how that's possible, to be totally honest with you. And that's the one thing that I'm looking at outside of like the ethics and everything and that whole conversation of like, is this an ethical practice to like manipulate news headlines to have favorable coverage for you? Probably not. But uh, I don't know, I, like to use multiple websites and URLs in an ad account, I know you can't do that. So I don't know how they got around that. Yeah, I don't get that either. What's really interesting, so this is their overview of, uh, this is like any time, let's just look at, oh, I guess we, I'm not sure the time period is this, daily. So you can see, can we do monthly? Oh wait, how do, what time period is this, any time? Uh, how about any, well, why, why? Do like last 30 days if you can. I did. Well, is that what it popped up there as? Sometimes these things get like a little weird. So, this I is mean, two point seven mil in the last thirty days. So they're saying I they only started this August first. 
like literally though, this is it. We have all, so like, let me change this to all time. But that would make sense because like, you know, she just started. Right? Just literally just started the campaign. Just Holy about shit. three weeks. She's ago. already spent almost $3 million. Can I mean, we run some ads? I mean, you <laughs> got to think. I saw that they had like 91 million in, uh, in donations that like, so you can get the yet. real clear breakdown of who's getting the money. And, uh, it's got to be some swing states. Like top Michigan, there. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. Like literally the top swing states all get in the most. Yeah. Okay. Budget. So most of their spend is going to video with. Yeah. Wait, what's that? Hold on. What's that breakdown? About a 1.7. So 1.8 yeah, 1. 1. to video, a mil to, to text. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense that like video is way higher than text Heavy in saturated. terms of spend. Yeah. And then I don't know if this is actually relevant here. Oh yeah, you can kind of click on these little bubbles and kind of see. Yeah, I guess it just reflects in the same chart. So, I mean, I guess regardless of non-political, if you're curious about your competition, you get some pretty transparent information. I wonder if it's as transparent because it's politicals, but I'm not sure. This is sick that Google does this, though. I will definitely say shout out to Google. Oh, no, for, for sure. I mean, you can always pull this up for Trump center. stuff or, you know, whatever. But um, the whole point of being able to buy keywords and send them to a website that's not yours, I have never seen that. I've been doing this a long time. Like, please, someone yeah. tell me why. If tell me why. I just want to know. Give, give us a comment. And give us something that would uh, – because I I'm like actually really curious to know that because even if you're like even if it's like hey you just got to like get verified to then do political ads well if like the Harris for president pact or like whatever that pact was you can't then just verify like five different accounts you know unless Google's like hey we want her to win so like we're going to let this slide I mean, I don't know. well, you also think about it too, right? Like, so typically for an advertiser, we, we're bidding on one keyword. Let's say it's Kamala Harris, and we have KamalaHarris.com, right? We're not allowed to put another domain in, no. right? No, you couldn't like, have I couldn't another domain. Kind of think it. about it, right? You couldn't have another position, right, for it. So is it another ad account that the advertiser is Kamala Harris, but then the domain that's registered is something else or verified or, or, or whatnot, and they're using multiple accounts to get around it? So when they are searching for something, that's, you know what? That's why we're not getting political ad. I'm a fucking California. I'm not going to see an ad for Kamala Harris. No. If I can... I should actually turn on a VPN. I don't have one on this computer, but turn on a VPN for those one of those zip codes and then search for it and see what pulls up. Because I would be baffled if I saw multiple, for you search Kamala Harris, you see her website and then you see other ads by her. That's fucking against their terms to have 100%. one entity have multiple placements for a given keyword. Think about it, dude. If So let's say I'm selling something. Uh, I don't know. Let's say it's this stress ball. We're selling this stress ball, okay? And I own stressball.com, and I've got an ad going for stress ball, okay? And then I have an Amazon listing, so I'm going to get another Google account, and I'm going to spend money, and I'm going to send it directly to my Amazon store. So when uh, someone searches for stress ball, right, you're going to see my website is number one, Amazon is number two. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to create an affiliate website that kind of looks like, I don't know, maybe it's a, a blog post about, I don't know, stress balls, the best ones out there. My first yeah. one's going to be listed and it's going to go back to my store. I'm going to run an ad for stress balls. So there you go. I get the top three positions. And what I can do, and this is what Google doesn't want you to do, is we're all in the same agreement of, hey, let's have super low cost per clicks because no one else is probably bidding on that. Um, even if they are, we can kind of control the market of those three spots. And we're only going to do a dollar CPC and we're going to control it. That's not allowed. <laughs> Yeah. That's what we're seeing here. Am I fucking crazy? No. And plus two, you also got to think like, what if you, I don't know, what if you owned a business and whatever that business was, and I'm like, you know what? I hate Steve. I'm going to go and buy text ads and write terrible headlines that slander his brand and send that traffic to his site. Or like, you know, yeah. like there's a lot of different scenarios that you could play out there where you got to own that that site. So I don't know how then they could send traffic to CNN because they don't own that. Like, I, I don't know. I this don't... is, this is definitely like a bit of a head scratcher of how this actually played out. How's it allowed? How's it allowed? It's against the terms. Yeah. Like the example I just gave about the stress balls, we cannot do. 
That's what they're doing here. What yeah, I don't get it. I have no idea how this is possible. I really have no idea how this is possible. I mean, even if this was one of the other candidates that, that are running and they were doing this, I would still be like, what the fuck? Like, 100%. Hello? <laughs> yeah. Like, what that's if... so wild. I mean, But I'm sure Google's people... okay with the $3 million that's being sent their way. In, that's what I'm saying. In how many days? In about a uh, month. Two weeks. Three weeks. So two weeks... So they're going to spend six million, probably they'll probably net closer to ten as they ramp up budgets, ten million dollars. That's this was fucking wrong, dude. It's wild. Yeah, I, I would be really curious to hear someone's perspective on how how Is this, this happening over at gets in market. I don't know. Does Bing have a? Uh, uh, like a Does transparency have, center? Yeah, transparency center. I don't think so. I could be wrong on that one. I'm, I'm actually Do a quick Google sure. search on that on the fly. I'm just looking at the search results right now. Here, I'll share my screen. Uh, so this is on Bing, just Kamala Harris. So news stories about polls. Trump's war of Kamala gets wins. Everybody gets health care. I mean, these are all just whatever, just the different stories. I'm trying to find if there's ads. Oh, yeah, those are so deceptive on where the ads are. <laughs> you got to watch out for them. Web, 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 web. I don't see any ads on the first place. Uh, interesting. Let's try Kamala News. Let's see what pops up. If there's any ads that pop up? Web. So they do have a transparency center. Can you try to see if you can search for... I can. Very so I think it's Kamala here. Harris for president is the entity. Your Harris for president is the advertiser. So let me, uh, let me show you that. I'll stop, yeah, I'll stop sharing. This is interesting. Ooh, we got some dirt. Yeah, if anybody wants like to to bring us on as an interview of some sort, we could call out the collective podcast and our companies. Why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, what do we got? So I just went to their ad library real quick and just type type their name in, and then there's nothing for advertisers. But when I type in ads on Bing here, it looks like I mean it does trigger some. Like look at this one now, Kamala Harris, phenomenal. <laughs> It's such good copy. But Where's yeah, it, it looks going? like I don't know. This looks like this is a uh, this is international. Next to uh, somewhere in Sweden. Huh. Does it actually go to a link? Uh, uh, the, the cookies. I don't know what the is heck? that a book? A I book think so. They yeah, to it's her. I think it's her book. Huh. So we don't see them. So maybe they're not advertising on Bing. Um, yeah. Maybe not on here. Interesting. All right. Well, we need an answer as far as how they're allowed to do something like that. That's 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 crazy. I just that's only like that's one drop of the bucket as far as like advertising money going into one stream for two weeks, three million dollars. <clears throat> And a lot of it, yes, is YouTube related or display ads, um, but still a million dollars in search ads. That's a lot of clicks, man. You got to no expect that they're not, they're not that expensive, probably. Um, it's a lot of clicks and not even clicks, man, because a lot of times, right, we talk about what Rand talked about. What is it? What was the stat about dead clicks that happens? Like 63% of clicks are not or. 60, I think after 70% searches, of searches have no clicks like, associated. No clicks. There. So it's yeah. just impressions, right? Yep. So here's the, here's the fucking crazy part. They're probably not... Okay, let's say that million dollars. That million dollars just on search, okay? The million dollars on search, unless I'm wrong, typically the only model that you pay for is cost per click, correct? Can you do a CPM search campaign? You can do CPM, yeah. Okay, but let's say that's probably not the case. That's very a, rare that you do so. Extremely rare, I'd say, yeah. 
yeah, well, in this case, if 70% of searches don't click, probably don't want to do that, right? Because you want to do the cost per click. So I'm saying that $1 million that they are spending, the amount of impressions, like what's that click-through rate? Probably not extremely high. So you can back out how many impressions that they're giving just from that $1 million. So just like that interpretation of like in the search result, how you can influence something. That That's it right there. That $1 million Wild. is probably what 70 percent? i don't know do the math i'm not smart enough let's say 10 million impressions all right i was gonna say you're Even talking those a couple little million. small zip codes like the small small zip codes like that's influence that is happening no doubt about it and you got to think too like you know people's attention spans are nothing anymore people aren't they're not reading they're not they don't know a search result yeah, yeah they don't know what a search result is as far as what's ads what's not ads what's the source what's not the source no. We know like a lot of times people don't even read ad copy and still click through websites. Still click so, through, yeah. And it's just all on mobile too. I bet the mobile impressions are ridiculous versus desktop. Uh, and you scroll through it and you see. Um, that's that's fishy, bro. Doesn't seem positive. Doesn't seem like a good trend there because, you know, like we said. Yeah, like I said, either either. Candidate, either candidate or all three candidates, you know, doing something like that. It's like, hmm. We can't do it as advertisers for our clients, but they are allowed to do that. Yeah. Not cool, bro. Also too, so like that's wild to think about that, that you're gonna spend that much money, like millions of dollars on that for like what? Like, I mean, obviously- Yeah, that's where like, like where is that million, like, like, like yeah, any campaign. It's like, that's where that's uh, all this money goes to. Um, it's so dude, interesting. I don't think I could do it, but imagine just running an agency that you're just political campaign ads. I mean, you're gonna be really good at it. You probably, that's all you do. And every four years, you just fucking suck in money. <laughs> remember, in uh, remember the agency that uh, that did like Obama's campaign? They got in like major trouble. I think they were like a, U- a UK based uh, agency. Um, dude, I, f- I forget their name now, but they got in like major trouble because they were doing like, I mean, that was like the big thing about Obama campaign was he their team was very sophisticated with social media. And that was like the first like social media president, they said, because like Facebook mm-hmm. was big at the time. And I think like at a certain point, Twitter and Instagram started popping up. But I think Facebook was a, a big piece and they had a lot of ads where, um, you know, they got like really sophisticated with their targeting, like interest based targeting, um, zip targeting, yeah, like gender targeting, all yeah. of those things where they were able to get like extremely specific messages. If you know somebody's into some type of religion or whatever, you know what to kind of like rile them up with. And I know that was one thing that really got that agency interest. Like I think people went to jail for that. Like it was a, it, it was not a good outcome for the uh, for the agency there. And I know a lot of that has been shut down. But I don't know. Like this this piece does not seem very uh, not very ethical there of like, Hey, let's kind of like rework the, uh, these news headlines in our favor just so we can get some quick influence. Like, I don't know. seems a bit sleazy. Yeah. This doesn't feel no. good. No. Um, like I said, either candidate or either all three candidates doing something like that. No doubt. As us advertisers, we can't do this. Like, come on, man. Like, should we be surprised though, man, that a tech company has decided to go down this route? I mean, regardless of like the conspiracy of like they're curating their results to be only positive. I was actually listening to all in podcasts. And they brought up the point of this whole like searching stuff and only Kamala stuff coming up for Trump. Well, it's basically because most websites that are being published online are biased to the left. So that's why you're seeing it. Sure. There's there is probably some there. influence. Yeah. yeah. And if you just go down that route, that's, that's fine. It's just, it's going to be biased because that's what they're indexing. But this on the search ad side, this is ex- like uh, explicit. Like it's they're, they're doing it. Um, it's direct evidence of manipulation or allowing them to do so. I just don't get it. I would like the answer. And I feel kind of like dumb. Like how do I not know what the answer is, is that they can advertise to other websites? We're not allowed to do that, dude. Like I don't get it. Yeah. Unless we're missing something completely, but like. I don't know, man. This seems a little crazy. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think we know what the answer is, but it's like you know something that you're probably not going to be able to prove anytime soon here. <sighs> you know, like it's just not. I think there's some people in favor in that company that campaign to let some some things slide because like there's just no other way. There's no other explanation. There's just no. 
There's no other explanation for that. I can't think of any. <laughs> if you're listening to this, let us know if you have an idea, and then also let us know if you have a counter argument for why you think it's Yeah, a please. Because I'd be, you know, open-minded there completely. Um, but to your point, Steve, like any party, any candidate doing this, I'd be like, that's a bit sleazy there. You know, it's a bit, yeah. a bit misleading. There. I mean, if you yeah. just look at a business, like for our clients and what we do, and we found out someone was doing that, that was a competitor and they're buying multiple ad spots, like I described in the whole stress ball, you know, analogy, you wouldn't be cool with that. Not at all. Um, so very, very, very interesting. <laughs> to say the least. Hey, okay, uh, do we want to move on to uh, the other topic that we had, or do we want to stick to this? No, I, th- I mean, I think that pretty much covered it. It's like, I don't know, there's not a whole lot more to say there, because we don't know what is that exactly happening. But I was going to say, you know, Kamala, if you want to come on the pod and chat through this uh, marketing <laughs> strategy, would love to, to have that convo, or anybody at, associated with the campaign. If you want to chat some of your marketing strategies, that would be fascinating conversation to have. Yeah, I want to know how it's done so I can sell more stress balls. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you mentioned an SEO update here to the algorithm. I feel like that would be a good thing just to at least hit on here. Honestly, I haven't heard about this update. Yeah, just another core update that they're pushing out. Uh, it's going to take a couple weeks. It almost seems nowadays, um, these algorithm updates, it kind of reminds me of like 15 to 10 years ago when Google would run an algorithm update. It was like almost every quarter. And they'd be announcing things would move around pretty drastically. Um, and then it kind of slowed down for a couple of, like the last, I don't know, maybe five years ago, it really slowed down and there'd be only some major updates or shifts. So yeah, it's just another one that's happening. Uh, I haven't looked into what people are saying, uh, but it's supposed to help out some smaller websites, supposedly. We're seeing positive results on our end, um, which is good, good to uh, see. And I'll tell you, there's no secret sauce. It's the same thing I've been doing the last 15 years, at least the core principles to it all, you know, solid on-page optimization, some, you know, good link building. Um, Patience (laughs) is another thing because it does look like, you know, to really get those pops, you need an algorithm update to happen. No doubt. But I'm not sure how stable it'll be. You know, I'll I'll be able to talk more about it next week as far as, you know, a bit stable um, of what we're seeing. So, yeah, just another update going on. So I don't have too much. I think we could touch base if we got time on the the whole single optimization point in google ads single that conversion optimization talk- piece here. yeah you, you want to open that up a little bit and see if we can run through it so i'll uh i'll share my sh- let me let me at least just like kind of give an overview and then i'll i got a deck pulled up here on google's part so i i know i mentioned this to you in slack here but essentially google is now recommending that teams optimize in google ads accounts towards one conversion action just one single point of conversion action and that is it and i feel like that's massive news that nobody's talking about i like i literally just heard about this like two weeks ago on, from a, a google rep and i was like wait i've been telling my clients for years now and i've also been getting the playbook from google you want to have a combination of upper funnel actions some like guide downloads, some key button clicks, like a, you know, book now button click, whatever, like some upper funnel actions. And then also intertwine that with like your lower funnel, like a form submission or purchase. Now Google is completely shifting and it's a bit frustrating because I don't, if I'm being honest, I feel like Google really fucked up over the years and just didn't realize and now it's kind of like a retroactive update. And the reason I say that is, so let me show you, let me just share this window with you. So this is their deck that they put out. And I actually this like this This is direction. official deck from Google. So this is Google documentation. Um, I don't know if this is okay. like privacy concerns on Google's part, but you know, is what it is. Um, so this is like, so why single stage optimization? So they basically say right here off the start smart binning is not funnel aware so say for in that example if you have like some button clicks some guide what downloads the fuck? and serious? a form submission google's like they can't differentiate the algorithm can't differentiate between like 
oh, those clicks or those guide downloads lead to form submissions or lead to purchases. Like that's a good indication. So it's basically just, they basically are saying here, it's nonsense. Like those button click actions, those guide just downloads. Just read those three lines. It's not nonsense. follow aware. It doesn't understand how con different conversion actions relate to each other. And hey, if you guys do your ROAS goal, we might be able to figure out, but we can't guarantee the mix of conversions. Pretty insane, Fuck. right? Pretty insane. So it's basically like, hey, for years now, you've been under the impression that like, you need a mix of top of funnel, bottom of funnel actions to give smart bidding and the algorithm enough data to optimize against to then get more quality form submissions. That's where I'm, well, that's where I'm like, I think they fucked up because either it was intentional or it wasn't, but that like narrative and messaging of like top of funnel, bottom of funnel actions, give the algorithm enough data. What do you mean? Give it enough data. If it doesn't understand the funnel awareness, and it doesn't understand how each one of these conversion actions relate to each other. What do you mean? You know, like that whole narrative is completely out the door. So honestly, you know what I, I can say, we've, we've seen this in client accounts where we do have softer light top of funnel goals, like clicks, et cetera. And we have seen campaigns get out of whack and start optimizing for like PDF downloads. No doubt. Even though we want form submissions because that's of why, this, we, it's, that's yeah, why that's, if you're running, a performance max campaign to your point like i've seen this happen so many times now in lead gen accounts where that performance max campaign might just start completely over indexing for like phone calls that could be just spam yeah. Not yeah. calls or button clicks because it's like hey we're running it up that cpa looks really good it's improving we're getting more volume we're getting more leads but then if you have attribution like, well none of this actually led to any business outcome like it was all junk. It was just a bunch of a bunch of clicks and a bunch just of like noise. And I bet it's a lot of bots too, to be honest, on those lower funnel stuff, like no the doubt. click goals and stuff like that. So I guess most of this is related to to lead gen, right? I mean, because we have a lot of the touch points. But I guess on e commerce website, you typically have your e commerce data imported in. But if you have a goal in there for like uh, buy to cart, right, or add to cart, sorry, get it out, or your newsletter. Fucking get it out. I mean, dude, that's going to be the first audit I do for any of our clients or new clients coming on board. It's like, dude, one conversion point. And what do they say about the conversion points? Like how many you need? So when talking to, to reps, they're like 15 to 30 in that general range. A month. And yeah, a month. Yep. So I kind of like this slide because it kind of gives you like an overview and a good preface here is like, this is definitely a bit more like, you know, lead gen B2B SaaS type type clients here, um, or like any type of lead gen client, instead of tracking like this lead and MQL and SQL closed deal, Google basically is telling us, Hey, it has no idea that these, like that somebody submits a lead, which then gets qualified by marketing, which then gets qualified by sales and then gets closed one. They have no idea what that whole path means at all. So instead of using that historical path for those conversion actions, you should have something in place like an SQL. So essentially Google saying one conversion action and that conversion action needs to be tied to like first party data or has been vetted by that internal team. So essentially it's like, Hey, this is a form submission or whatever, but it's qualified. Like somebody internally said, this looks good sales or marketing has qualified this as a good lead and optimize against that. So you kind of want to think about using this as your mean conversion point and maybe not like a closed one deal. If you just don't have enough of those, if you do have enough of those closed one deals that pulling through long term, that's what you're going to want to optimize towards. But as like, you're kind of setting this up, you're probably going to have to rely on like an MQL or an SQL, which has a bit more volume as, a, as opposed to like a closed one deal. And I'll be honest though, Trevor, I think most people are just at capturing the lead phase. Um, no doubt. You know, a, lot, a lot of times they don't have a CRM or, or tracking setup that they're pushing stuff back through. But th I think one thing that's missing from this slide is a lot of the people that we see, it's like, okay, you have the form submission, which let's just call it a lead. But all the other actions that you're tracking, like we we're talking about PDF downloads, newsletter signups, telephone mm. number clicks, even importing calls from, let's say, a call tracking software. If they're not your main attractor, get it out. 
and just have your lead form submit. Yep. That's that's crazy. That's that number two slide is funny, man. Like that says it all right there. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> and I do wanna I do wanna caveat there, like so to your point about call tracking and say you're tracking calls and you're tracking form submissions and you're tracking still track it all, no doubt. Still track it all, still pull those goals into GA four or whatever reporting tool that you're using. And I would still probably track it in platform as well, but just like set them to secondary. secondary. Okay. Exactly. And just have the one SQL, um, your main kind of action as your primary, because Google's going to optimize towards primary. And that's what it's going to report in the conversions column is primary. But at least with those secondary actions, you'll have an idea. So you could, you still want those actions tracked. Um, Cause maybe you could see fluctuations from other sources of like, Hey, we're getting more calls this month or we're getting more of this action this month. And we've actually seen an increase of quality. Maybe that's an indication that like, you know, qualified traffic uses that action to, you know, reach out to your team as opposed to like, so it's still important to track those. The, the kind of nuance here is that we'd want to set the one SQL or MQL, whatever that is, that has enough volume that's been vetted internally as your primary action. And to kind of take this a step further, assigning values, because ultimately, and maybe we can get into this into like another podcast um, where we sure. talk a little bit more like specifics about like, you know, smart bidding, because that can get into a whole nother conversation. But essentially long term, they want you to attach a value to your conversion action. So you could use like a maximized conversions value bidding, or maybe like a target ROAS bidding to optimize towards value and increase those those submissions there. Um, but I think like the main takeaway is like, get an action that's primary, that's vetted by the team, because you're going to get more quality over time. And you'll like this one. Essentially, kind of like the older model here is like, hey, you're going to get a ton of these like low quality, least likely to convert. Um, whereas like later down the later down the funnel here, if you'd like, you know, potentially use what we're, we're recommending to implement, you're going to see less volume. So you're going to see less overall volume, but at the end, like this lower funnel, you're going to get more quality on the lower funnel. So it's kind of interesting say, to them like call out, like, yeah, you're going to get a ton of shit traffic. If you, uh, if you don't set this up here and like kind of, kind of admit that. Yeah, that's crazy. So I'm like, what, did, why, what's the change? Like wh why all of a sudden? I mean, I don't, that's the one thing that I tried to, like, I straight up asked uh, both reps that I was chatting with about this of like, what changed, you know, like what, and I couldn't get an answer. That's, that's why I go back. I really feel like Google realized over time, hey, a lot of our like top advertisers track a bunch of different actions because they're trying to meet that conversion threshold. And then they realize it actually doesn't lead to better outcomes. Whereas if you give it one action, that's been vetted internally, there's more likelihood of the algorithm optimizing towards quality. Like it makes sense, but I think it was just like, they didn't realize that over time. That, I don't know, that's just kind of my guess. Yeah, I mean, I remember back in the day, let's let's say, I don't know, just from e-commerce perspective, might be an easier way of looking at this, where it's like, hey, you don't have 30 conversions that's coming into your store, right? What do you start with? Well, let's maybe move it back to optimizing to uh, add to cart, right? And let's say you don't have enough for add to cart. You move it back to page views, like yeah. product page views, right? Because it shows intent, right? You kind of work through that funnel. Previously, we would kind of load all those in and we would, you know, see, okay, page views hit 30. Okay, we know that's good. Okay, the moment that um, uh, add to cart hit 30, we could turn off page views, right? But you still have, you still have, uh, purchases in there and then yeah. eventually purchase. But this doesn't even like, I guess you could kind of do something similar. If you don't have 30, move up a level, but I don't know, honestly, like I don't, maybe it's going to train the algorithm really wrong. Like, for example, I'm just thinking like, let's say you do do an add to cart and you do hit 30 and you're like, okay, great. And then let's say you're maybe, maybe it gets up to a hundred and then you do get 30 conversions or actually purchases and the moment you switch that from a secondary of the of the add to cart to your purchases like dude is the algorithm going to take over okay <laughs> that's where you kind of gotta you kind of gotta trust the uh i don't know trust it and just like switch it on and see what happens there but i yeah. i'm kind of thinking the same thing you know i'm like actively dealing this dealing with this with clients of like pushing towards this transition yeah it's a big one it's a massive one. And uh, 
I will definitely give some updates as we go along here. Um, but I think my long, kind of like long-term thought is it's no doubt about it, annoying and frustrating. Cause I feel like I've been preaching the, the total opposite for years now <laughs> to be totally honest. But I think this actually makes a lot more sense of like Google can't decipher of like button click action form submission all the way through MQL SQL to closed one. So just optimize towards one action that's been vetted by the team and you're probably going to see more quality pull through. It makes total sense. Like that, that thought process makes sense. It's just kind of frustrating now, kind of like going back and revisiting conversations with clients. I'm like, Hey, massive update on Google. Well, yeah. That's what we told, we told this clients 10 years ago and then it got changed by Google's, Hey, add more conversion points. And now we're going back 10 years. Pretty okay. Much. Cool. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So you got to love it there. This Google company, I do hope they get broken up into a couple different pieces. <laughs> I would, that would be, I mean, that could be a whole other topic of like Apple spins up their own search engine and everything. Sure. But I don't know. I think there's just, whether it's, it's real or not, like some of the like poor quality results, whether that's real or not, I think the perception's out there and, uh, you know, perception's often reality. So I think Google hopefully has a fire lit under them to like really correct course here. Um, and hey, maybe these LLMs and maybe Apple and everything puts pressure on them and we see some improvements, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we will say things are changing for the first time in a long time. So we'll just hang on here. <laughs> one, one, one final note, because uh, I know we got to run here. I don't know if you saw um, Eric Schmidt. He was, uh, I think he was a former CEO of, of Google. Yes, former CEO right? of Google. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he did a recent speech that I feel like it's going kind of viral. I think it was at uh, Stanford. He was doing like some type of course or, or whatever on AI. And he yes. literally said in there that Google's quality is decreasing. And a lot of these startups and, and other um, like LLMs are rapidly making gains on them because they have a work from home policy and they have teams in place one day a week or not at all. And you're going up against startups with, you know, a, a team that's in place and in person. I thought that was a really interesting point and uh, going to be interesting to see how that plays out over time of like, does Google shift back, you know, to in person and do a lot of companies shift back to that Could totally see that trend, trend kind of popping up here. Interesting. Okay. I'm not <sighs> advocating for it. I like, you know, smaller knit team remote here. Yeah. Um, but if you're building a product and you're building a service and everything, definitely think there's something to be said about in person. No, for sure. There is definitely that value there. So we will see, but hopefully this gave, uh, gave some good value there and, you know, teams can start shifting towards a single point of conversion um, and seeing some, some increased quality. I will say tangentially, like we made an update to performance max and instead of tracking a couple different conversion actions, remove some that were over indexing and we have seen some improvements with it. So something to, something to be said about, you know, one, point of conversion and a bit more focus for the algorithm. Makes sense. Well, I think it's a good spot to stop and uh, we'll catch you next time. We'll catch you all next time. Let us know your thoughts there and uh, Harris campaign, please reach out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Later y'all.